All right, boys, welcome in. I have no idea who's tuning in for this, but we are very excited. I have a special guest today. This is David Hammond. He is a, a red pill ex Andrew Tate lover, <laughs> <laughs> YouTuber turned uh, born again believer and uh, on fire believer. He coaches men on masculinity, on biblical masculinity, but he also has his own ministry and he's turned to Jesus and also become a full on evangelist. So you guys are in for a treat. This is going to be a great video. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to grow deeper in your relationship with God. And the goal is that you will grow in your relationship with the Lord, but also us help to point you in the right direction towards reaching your highest potential in Christ. So David's going to share his testimony. He's going to get into the nitty gritty. I'll also probably add in my testimony, a few bits and pieces to that. And we both came to the Lord. We were not always Christian. We were uh, very far off for a long period of our lives, but um, we're going to share our stories and then we'll do probably a little Q&A. We'll get into some interesting topics, but David, feel free to start us off with your testimony and you can just rip it. All right, guys, what is going on? My name is David Hammond. I used to, for some of you guys wondering, maybe uh, maybe you recognize this pretty face, maybe not. I used to run a channel called Self-Developed. It was, I love how Braden said Andrew Tate fan. I mean, he was okay. He, he wasn't my top bins, but, but yeah, guys, you know, with my old YouTube channel, which is still there now, uh, it's got, Man, it was like over two hundred thousand subs, guys. I was a pretty large YouTuber. I really, I really full sent it. I, I, it took me a while to build that channel, guys. It, it took me a while. I've been on YouTube for almost ten years now. I started in twenty sixteen, so about about eight years. And uh, long story short, you know, I was it, it was self development. So, uh, you know, women attraction. I guess you could kind of say like red pill, right? I, I think that's more of it. Not so much Andrew Tate, but red pill. Just, uh, you know, self improvement, women attraction, uh, how to be a better man, and, you know. You know, the Bible says, right, we're always called apart. I believe it's Jeremiah 1 5, right? God knew us while he was forming us in the womb or before. So I truly believe, like, while even I was in that industry building it, I was always a little different. Like, I noticed the, the typical red pill manosphere was much more like the Tate kind of, uh, it was more like self worship and idolatry. And I always kind of felt that was just kind of like effeminate and weird, like very worldly. And even before I was a Christian, I, I really tried to keep the focus on the channel about God. And, and I wouldn't necessarily say God per se, but you know, I would maybe at that time say the universe or a higher power, but it was very mission focused, like men, we have to be on our mission. And it really resonated with a lot of men. So that was my channel before there really was nothing wrong with it. And in fact, like, I could have stayed guys. Like, it's not like I was like making porn or making like, I was like an ex cocaine. Like it, it really wasn't anything like it. my testimony. It's, it's good, but it's not like, you know, and this is why, like, sometimes I wish I was crazier. Sometimes I wish I was like, yeah, man, I got, I killed like three guys. I was in prison for like 10 years, but it's not, it's not, man. I was just, um, finding truth. I was seeking truth. And that's why I started the channel and eventually got to a point after maybe, I would say two or three years of doing it full time where I hit a crossroad, man, and I was growing as a man and I was really pursuing truth. And long story short, I was with my girlfriend at the time for five years, guys, and uh, we were button heads, right? I was, the Bible says in John 6, 40, uh, John 6, 44, Jesus says, no one can come to me unless the father draws him. So I was very slowly being drawn towards Christianity, even though I wasn't born again yet. I was like this whole, yay, man, you know, I, I like this more than kind of like this, like self-improvement red pill space. I was I was, I was naturally beginning to, you know, the wheats and the tares. Right. And then, so eventually me and my girlfriend, we kind of just hit a breaking point where I was, you know, moving towards Christ and she was kind of staying in the world and, you know, there's nothing wrong with her, but we split. I actually prayed to God the night before I said, God, look, I've been with this woman for about five years. I'll marry her. Like I'm, I'm in it for the long run guys. That's why I wouldn't even consider myself like the red pill. Cause the red pill was very like bang the next woman on. Oh, no, 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 dude, I was going to marry her. I was like a loyal guy guys. I was like, good dude. Again, none of us are righteous in the eyes of guys. God, but you know, I was never like a like super degenerate, right? And then yeah, she broke up with me the next day after the prayer. Nothing wrong with her. We were just going two different paths. And then, guys, what, what's beautiful about that is the Bible says in Psalm 46 10, be still and know that I'm God. For the first time, because I wasn't, you know, constantly fornicating, uh, you know, just full of dopamine, I could feel God. It, 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 guys, I, I grew up like agnostic. I, I didn't grow up Christian. And I could feel literally that verse. Write that down. John 6 44. Jesus says, No one can come to me unless the Father draw, draws him. Guys, verbatim, I felt like there was a lasso around my soul. And I was like, literally being. Being like pulled not no like wonky exorcism like no 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 nothing that like i didn't see any hallucinations i wasn't on drugs or anything i it was just a very subtle like like 
magnet and i looked out my window this window in my condo on the other side and i knew it was god guys you know the bible says that god's law is written into all of our hearts so i knew this was jesus even though i wasn't like you know so what i did this is very important is i said jesus I've been told my whole life, you're just like an old white man's religion, you know, your Catholicism, you're this, you're, you're in the church, you're churchianity, whatever it may be, like you're, you're a denomination, whatever that is, Protestantism. I said, you're not, I've been told you're not actually real though. Like, 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 you know what I mean? You're just a religion. And, uh, but I said, nonetheless, I can feel this. And I said, I will follow you, but guide me. And at that point, whether I knew it or not, I was going both feet in the, the Greek word for repent, uh, triggers a lot of people, but it means metanoia, which is to change our mind, right? To change directions. So all I was doing is in that moment, I repented of my old lifestyle, which was like, cause, cause you guys need to understand this just to try to make this quick, but this is a very important topic. A lot of people forget the reason in uh, Mark 1 15, Jesus says, repent and believe the gospel. It's twofold. The reason you have to do two, you can't just believe the gospel without repenting is you got to view like your feet let's say we're planted okay one foot no actually it starts off like this both feet are in the world fornicating live my best life and then eventually what happens is one foot's with christ but one foot still in the world this was me i wasn't born again yet but i was like i like this christ thing and he was pulling me but i still had one foot in the world what repenting is is to fully acknowledge that this life the world even though it's fun even though it's got the glimmer and the glamour it will lead to hell the wages of sin is death and i had the fear of the lord in me like for the first time i realized i looked like death in the face and i was like if i keep doing this if i keep fornicating or or, or whatever i'm gonna go to hell and that like really put the fear of the lord in me and i said I, clearly this is wrong. I, the wages of sin is death so at that point i put both feet in with christ i was like christ I'll follow you. I'll do it. I'll go all in. And he, at that point is when I became born again. A lot of Christians, though, guys, you don't know what it is to be born again because you're lukewarm. You have one foot in the world, one foot here. God will not, or Christ, whatever, God, Christ is not going to give you the, the Holy Spirit's not going to indwell within you if you're one foot in the world, one foot not, because you're not ready yet. Guys, what you need to understand, and Braden, I will speak about this uh, later because I'm going to let him speak up and chat in a bit. But you, you, guys, when you become a born again believer, it is a big deal. Okay. It is not no, like, like I actually was watching Braden's video uh, today. It was like, once you encounter Christ, you are going to change. Okay. It might be this way, this way, but you're going to change. So, so just be ready. So we'll, I'll let Braden speak, but we'll get into that later. Yeah. Before I speak, David, if you don't mind, <clears throat> kind of walk them through because you got born again and you know, the logical brain, you would have kept, you know, making the red pill videos. You would have kept talking about dating and making the same kind of content that you were already making, yeah. right? But you didn't. And you made that pivot and you started talking about God more and more. Um, for those of you who don't know, I actually started following David on YouTube um, long before I started making content. And I slowly just started. All of a sudden, he was talking about God and you were wearing like a rosary around your neck or something. Oh, so <laughs> cringy, bro. I don't want to think about that, man. I was like, uh -huh. <laughs> But yeah, like you made the pivot. You went from like more the red pill dating masculinity stuff yeah. to starting to talk about God. So kind of walk them through what inspired you to do that, why, and then also like going into your ministry and starting to make content that was like fully about Jesus and just kind of walk them through that. Yeah, great guys. So what, what's beautiful, the Bible says in Ezekiel 36, 26. I'm so glad I can like bang out verses now because it's like a Christian channel. If it was like a self-improvement channel, I would it's kind of it's kind of weird because they're kind of like Ezekiel who? And you're just like Ezekiel, oh boy. <laughs> Ezekiel 36, 26, it says that God removes our heart of stone, gives us a heart of flesh, and the spirit which then allows us to stand in statutes and his commands. 2 Corinthians 5 17, right? When we become a new creature, the old is past. So um, like I was alluding to before, guys, when you become truly born again, you're a brand new creature. Like you literally guys have done a one. It's like a light switch. You were dead in your trespasses and now you're born anew. Everything changes. And even if you don't realize it, because there is sanctification, which takes time, right guys? Amen. It takes time. But when you are justified, you're born again. It's it, 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 what kind of comes to mind. It's like, it's like if you, um, like, a, like a new, uh, it's like a zygote, it's new life. It's when sperm meets the egg. The second they meet, there's conception life begins it every everything has changed it's a light switch even though it's very small you right it's a little tiny baby uh it's still life and it can it it was not life before so it's, it's beautiful and with that guys and this is why god's not just going to give his holy spirit like a buffet like all these hyper grace christians oh one two three pray with me oh i'm born again because <laughs> 
what you guys need to understand in Romans, Romans 1, it says that we go from a slave of sin to a slave of righteousness, guys. When you're born again, you're bought and paid for. It's no longer your life anymore. Jesus literally bought and paid you. You, you were on the conveyor belt like a cow to be slaughtered and he took you and now you're on the conveyor belt to heaven. And the way I view it, guys, is your life is no longer your own. I don't own my life. Jesus owns my life. Meaning when he says, hey, David, you jump, I say, how high? He says, David, go left. I say, hey, he said, quit your job. I said, okay. And again, don't be irrational. I'm not saying to be stupid, but you guys get what I, this is a very real thing when he says, David, and this is conviction, right? And it's gradual. Stop making that content. I want you to start speaking about me. I'm like, uh, okay. And you start and you start a hey, David and it gets deeper guys. You know what? I, uh, I, I, I want you to let go of that channel, 220,000 subs. It was like a pretty big source of income. I want you to let that go. What? Are you, what? Are you serious? Are you sure? What am I? Am I gonna start a new one? I'm not gonna tell you about that yet. You're just gonna let it go. I'm like, okay, I let it go, right? And and it keeps going, guys. And then now to bring it full circle, um, I've started a new channel, you know. And I I didn't really, I had a kind of idea that I would, but Braden actually, that's why we're interviewing or he's interviewing you now, is because he was a pretty pivotal reason on why I started back up the new David Ammon channel, which has grown pretty quick because I saw his channel you know with biblical masculine christian content i was like all right god i think it's time for me to just rip off the bandage start fresh like runescape press i've been working thousands of hours on this character man you know how hard that is to let that go or in like elden ring i have every sword katana every magic spell and god's like yeah start from scratch i'm like do you know how long it took me to get every potion and all these things? And you're just telling me to let it go. And he's like, yep. So I'm like, all right, so bet. I, I pressed restart. But now what's beautiful is that I don't have to make the same mistakes. I can go on like hyperdrive. I know where all the best tools are. I know where the best weapons are. So that's why I'm trying to, I really think this channel is just going to, my, my hope is that it'll just kind of explode out of nowhere. And people are like, how? Yeah, because I've been on YouTube for eight years, guys. Like this is not... This ain't no people like you're good at speaking, Dave. I've been speaking for eight years, guys. It's not just my first rodeo. And the last thing I'll say, I'll let I'll let Braden go is that we'll, we'll talk 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 more in a second. Is the ministry we started Christ Develop? That is not this channel. It's actually a different one. I started it beforehand. Out of nowhere. Long story short, six months ago. Well, actually, I'll let you speak, Braden, and then we'll kind of go into that because that's a whole can of worms. Yeah. No, and I definitely want you to get into like the the ego death of having to let go of the two hundred twenty thousand subscriber channel, and then. All of a sudden, I see you standing on street corners getting cussed out by <laughs> angry liberal people and, and just crazy people. So we'll definitely get into that. But um, yeah, for my story, <clears throat> some guys who watch the channel already know my story. But um, I was actually raised Catholic. And for, for the Catholics, for the uh, recovering Catholics that watch my channel, it is... Uh, it's a very interesting religion where like I was born in, in South Louisiana and it's mostly a, a culture of full on alcoholics and just degenerates. Like Catholicism is the main religion in Louisiana, yeah. but nobody actually like they follow it, but it's yeah. not like there's no like real strict rules to anything. Everybody's still getting like plastered drunk and then they just run to the priest for confession yep. once a year yep. and they yep. have the whole nine. They take, you know, the, the Eucharist and all this stuff, but nobody's really born again. Like nobody was really living yeah. it out. I remember my dad would take us to church basically every Sunday. Like I, I was in um, like Catholic school for my entire young adult life. I would go to church during the week. I was in all the religion classes. I knew all the stories about Jesus, but I had absolutely no relationship with Jesus. And uh, we would go and we would sit in the very back of the church and uh, the second the priest would end speaking, we would run out, we'd run to Chili's and we'd go to Walmart to get groceries for the day. And my parents didn't really take their faith very seriously. Yeah. Um, so that was my foundation for like Jesus. And it's sad because a lot of um, Catholics, like that's all they know is, yeah. is that churchianity or Catholicism where there's no genuine connection. Nobody's really born again. Oh. Obviously, there are some born again yeah. Catholics, but yeah. For the vast majority, at least the ones that I was around, um, there was no focus on growing in your relationship with God. Like my Bible was a like a paperweight. It literally had yeah. dust on it. Yeah. <laughs> Most Catholics have the exact same thing where the Bible yeah. is not touched at all. Uh -uh. It's almost like you have to go through the priest to be able to hear from God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's how it's set up. Yeah, you're not even you're not yeah. even really supposed to read your Bible, to be honest. It's you no. go there and you listen and he <laughs> reads it. But exactly. Anyway, yeah. And you just listen and, yeah. and you do what you're told. But yeah. um I ended up going what's funny is I went off to high school 
and I ended up gaining like over a hundred pounds. I got to the point where I was like 300 pounds. I was fat as crap. I was playing football and uh, got really heavily bullied during high school. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any friends. Um, people would make fun of me. I developed a crippling corn, corn addiction. Yeah. Yeah. And that lasted for about like a full on decade, but I couldn't make wow. eye contact with people. I was super awkward and I had no relationship with Jesus. So it was kind of just me and, and my twin brother. And so I go through high school, once again, bullied, made fun of no friends. And uh, me and my brother end up graduating. And I remember he looked at me and he was like, hey, dude, are, are you ever like going to get tired of being fat and like having no friends and, and being a loser, basically? Mm -hmm. And I would cope and I would say, ah, oh, dude, like we, we were made to be fat. And even though I had no relationship with Jesus, I would be like, God made us to be fat. I would yep. cope. I would, I would just make excuses. I have a bad metabolism, all this stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, screw that. And he starts running every single day and working out. And I remember thinking to myself, man, if, if he actually like pulls this off and he loses the weight, then anytime we meet girls, like they're going to be picking between me and him and yeah. they're just going to go with the skinny in shape twin. <laughs> like, I'm not dating this fat weird guy. I'm going to go with the other guy. Yeah. And that was enough of a decision for me to want to lose the weight. And so I tell you this because I lose the weight. I go off to college and I end up joining a frat and all of a sudden, like I have attraction from women. Girls will look at me and, and they're, they're staring at me and they're coming up and I'm matching with girls on Tinder and I have a jawline and I'm confident and uh, my confidence ends up skyrocketing. I join a frat. I become a full on degenerate. I was going to the bar probably six nights a week, getting absolutely plastered drunk with my friends from college <laughs> and uh, hooking up with as many girls as I could. I was uh, I was a really bad guy. I talk about this in a lot of videos, but I was I was abusive. I was horrible to women and I was literally just living for myself and uh, I did that for about three years. I would just hook up with as many girls as I could. I would bounce from relationship to relationship. All of my relationships would end up failing. I had a very similar thing to you, David, where you're having a lot of sex with your girlfriend and you think she's the one and you know things are going good, but you're, you're probably toxically fighting with one another. You form that deep sexual attachment to one another. Yeah. yeah. You're looking at life through the red, you know, the rose eyeglasses yeah. and everything is just warped. You know, yeah. you can't think logically. You're just thinking with your wiener yep, and yep. Uh, you make a lot of poor decisions. <clears throat> and that's what I did. I did that for um, about four years in college. And around 2020, everything changed for me because my brother ends up getting radically saved. My twin brother, he goes down like a TikTok rabbit trail of like born again Christians talking about the gospel, talking about the end times and all nice. this stuff. And he thinks to himself, dude, I, man, I want to see how this thing ends. I think the Bible has this story in like revelation about how all this is going to play out because he's yeah. thinking like the world's about to end because, yeah, yeah, yeah. because of the, the stuff that happened yeah. in 2020 that we're not yeah. going to say. So this thing doesn't get banned. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So he ends up getting saved. And overnight he goes from being a degenerate just like me and going to the bars and, and hooking up with his girlfriend and being a screw off to all of a sudden he doesn't even want to listen to like post malone on the radio like he's yeah. smashing that play button and uh won't go out with me he's he's reading his bible instead of going wow. and getting drunk he's not having sex with his girlfriend anymore wow. and i remember thinking to myself like dude what has happened to this guy yeah how has this happened is this dude like smoking something like who's who's this jesus guy he's talking about all of a sudden <laughs> like we're catholics we don't actually read the exactly. bible exactly and uh, yeah, so he starts walking the narrow path, like basically overnight. And um, it wasn't until about eight months later, I'd been dating this girl for for a while. And I kept pushing off like that calling of God that you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. I would feel the calling. I'm like, man, his life looks better than mine. But I still want to do me like I still yeah. want to have sex with my girlfriend. I still want to go get drunk with my frat buddies. Like I don't want to submit to God. Yeah. And uh I prayed this. I ended up praying the same exact prayer that that you had prayed. Where about eight months later, I'm I'm still struggling with my girlfriend, fighting all the time, arguing. The whole relationship revolved around sex and getting drunk, and it was not going well at all. I ended up becoming a very effeminate man, where I'm like crying on her shoulder and like arguing with her and being a total man. <laughs> and uh, I remember praying the prayer and being like, you know, God, if you can hear me, 
because Tristan's life looks so much better than mine, my twin. I said, if, if you're real and you want me to be with this girl, let us figure this thing out. If not, take her out of my life. And within like literally a day or two, I ended up um, having a conversation with her and, and things ended up ending. She basically wanted to break up with me. And then like four hours later, I found out that she was at the bar with another dude. So like the entire like back half of the relationship, she was basically cheating on me. And I remember I hit rock bottom at that point and uh, ended up saying, hey, Lord, you know, I know you've been watching my life and my life absolutely sucks. Like what I've been doing is not working. These relationships are not working. And uh, I gave my life to Jesus at that point. I know a lot of people say, like, you don't really give your life to Jesus. He kind of just like steamrolls into your life and and he makes you submit or, or give your life to Jesus or you're going to live a, a rough life and, and non-submitting to him. But that's what happened. And uh, I ended up finding Jesus, becoming born again. And uh, what's funny is I <laughs> started watching a lot of videos on YouTube. And uh, at first I found Casey Zander and I found all the red pill YouTubers because I was like, man, why do all my relationships not work out? Like, what am I doing wrong? And uh, this guy named David Hammond ended up popping up on my YouTube channel. <laughs> and uh, at the time I'd been working from home, but I just started slowly like binge watching David's channel. All the videos I'm like learning about masculinity and femininity and all this stuff. And I'm it's like blowing my mind because I'm like, dude, all the stuff that I was doing wrong, this is exactly why I was going wrong. And you're like putting everything together for me. And so I started watching all your videos and uh, a couple of months went by and then I start seeing you talking about God, not like Jesus, but God, yeah, yeah, yeah. And God, you need to find God and all this. Yeah. Stuff. And I'm like, wow, this guy's he's talking about God. That's so awesome. Like, that's cool. You start wearing the rosary and everything. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Not supposed to wear, by the way, guys. I, I Why that? I don't know. That's like a Catholic thing, too. Like, yeah. I got the little cross now. But I, when you're a baby Christian, it looked cool. And it actually helped because it further solidified in my mind where it's like, I'm a Christian now. Yeah. I actually was wasn't born crazy. again, though, when I was wearing the rosary, believe it or not. I was, coming, it, I was very close, but I wasn't born again. Right. But that's how it starts with everybody. Yeah. It's only totally yeah. like step by step. You you start to feel that calling in God from God in your heart and the Holy Spirit starts working in you. And then it starts to slowly change exactly. your desires like you're talking about. But yeah, like I start seeing you talking about God and then eventually you start talking about the Holy Spirit. You get born again. You get plugged into yeah. your church. Yeah, like, yeah. This is crazy. Like I would have never, ever thought that this would happen. Like seeing that firsthand and seeing your channel. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, like I... Obviously, I think people like you and, and even like Hamza inspired me to, to make a channel. But like seeing your content going Christ centered and and seeing your videos starting to do well with Christ developed. I was like, dude, I got to full send this because there's <laughs> men that are actually making biblically based like masculine content. Yeah. And you and I have talked about this all the time. There's a lot of like soy boy feminine Christians that have just been raised in church their whole life and they haven't yeah. experienced actual life. So yeah, I feel yeah. like people like you and me have to step up and actually make content that resonates with guys that aren't just soft, <laughs> Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, yeah. but that's basically my story. Started making content and uh, now we have, we both have YouTube channels. David started his own, but yeah, I mean, you started a new one and it's growing and it's, it's getting bigger, but um, yeah, we, we now help each other out. We, we bounce ideas off of each other and speak into one another, give each other ideas for content, but most importantly, help each other to become more Christ-centered men. And so, Amen. yeah, well said. Absolutely. But that's my story. <laughs> Yeah, we got we got pretty similar stories, man. We were both just young men, you know, figuring it out, guys. And I, I believe now, you know, the whole point of why Braid and I have this channel, why we're collaborating right now is like you said, we're entering a new wave, literally like a new dimension, guys, where, you know, it, what I say is this, I said this to Braid, I said this to another guy too, you got a lot of there's, there's two kinds of people, but we need the third kind of person, okay? And again, you know, no shots, guys. We're, hey, who, who, you know, who are we? We're just losers, sinners, but we're all figuring it out. And it's something I've observed, right? There are a lot of conservatives who are not Christian. So we got some we got some masculine channels, right? It's like Andrew Tate, you know, Red Pill. We got conservative, strong, masculine men, but they're not mm -hmm. Christian. Okay, okay, that's the first kind. Okay, all right. Kind of like where I was, maybe you were before. Number two, we have the Christian. So he's Christian. 
but he's not conservative. He's kind of like that soy boy, goobly gop, rainbow cookie, gazed love yet, like just kind of like the Ned Flanders kind of guy, which, hey, man, you know, if he's born again, glory to God. That's amazing. It's so much better than even the conservative who's not. But right. still, you feel it's missing something because we know that – was this Jesus? Was he just a hippie like this? Or did, did, did he not have some righteous anger and flipped over tables and was courageous even up until death, right? And yeah. then – so what we need now is we need both. And that's where we come to the picture where we are kind of like that. Like I said, we were, I, I started off like Braden, just like a dude into self-improvement, self-development, learning all these tactics. And then I found Christ. Christ was kind of like the booster on top. Like my car was already running. Now it was going to hell, you know, so that's not really a good thing, but it was already running. And then when I found Christ, it was like putting like nitro fuel in me where it just exploded. Now all the wisdom, uh, every trait that you could think possible just expanded. And that's really where we're at now just to build up masculine, <clears throat> Christian, conservative men. Because, my friend, I believe that's a real born again believer. And I believe the Christians who are, you know, tech, I think a lot of them just aren't born again. But, you know, some of them are and they're a bit more feminine. I don't really think it's their fault. I think it's just because that's all they've been taught their entire lives. They went to church growing up. A lot of pastors now are very effeminated. They're very weak. You know, I actually saw one of your videos. Most of the congregations are run by women now. I actually went to a church the other, I think last week, just a new church. I'm, you know, I'm looking for a church now and kind of the same thing. The majority of people are women. They're kind of just dancing and singing, which is fine. You know, it's fine. But like, I need at a certain point men to really convict me. And I, and I really didn't get too much of that, unfortunately. And uh, I think that's most churches now. And I think that's where you and I come to the picture to say, look, man, your church is good. Amen. You should go to a church. But I'll be honest, in 2024, most Christian leaders, guys, are soy boys. And they just don't have that same oomph anymore that they once did back in like the apostolic days where these guys, hey, you cut off my hand before I before I deny, like right in front of the congregation. Like these guys, oh, man. So, and I'm not saying that's Braden and I. I mean, hope, hope to God doesn't come like that. But at least we are young men who can relate with you guys and say, no, we've been there. Every struggle, that's the most important thing too. God bless the pastors, but even if they are bold, you can't relate with them because they're usually 40s, 50s, 60 years old, where with him and I, 26, 27, you know, early, mid 20s, we've been there, man. I know what it's like to get heartbroken. I know what it's like to, to get lost in this, to be addicted to this, to uh, whatever, literally whatever question you have. And, and that's why... Um, I really see this new wave of biblical strong men who are also young and relatable. Oh man, we finna take over the game, boy. Yeah, why do you think that there's so little like strong masculine leaders in churches and like good churches in general? Uh, Satan, simple answer. Uh, the <laughs> Bible itself is the most masculine book. If you actually read the Bible, and this is why, I, man, this is gonna be a hot take. I bro, I literally said this to my friend the other day, right? the guy who went to the church. I literally like straight up told him, I was like, bro, I'd rather be masculine and read the Bible and learn Christ by myself opposed to go to an effeminate church and feel like I, I lose my edge. And, yeah. and, and, and he was like, well, what do you mean? I was like, we are a byproduct of our environment. I love you guys. You're born again believers. But if you're all women who are just there to dance and sing, and I'm a masculine man going out into the world, stepping on snakes and scorpions. If I keep going to that church eventually, just by design, right? Like you made a video of like a pig. You got two pigs, one in a farm, a fluffy little pink pig, and then one in the wilderness. If I'm if I'm in the wilderness my whole life and I start going to a farm, cushy, cushy, oh, you know, mommy, 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 I'm going <laughs> to start losing my tusks. And that terrifies me. Not because of like, oh, they're any weaker per se, but it's like, we need masculine men. And just to answer the question quickly, it's Satan's infiltrated the church. This is evident. Uh, there are many ploys for this. It, the pastors have become weak. I mean, we look at like the food that we eat. We look at the, the TV. We look at the media. We're now called bigots and this phobe, that phobe. If we actually preach the Bible, you pull up 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Oh man, your church congregation will crucify you. And the thing is too, is like, you got to understand guys, just psychologically, women are the consumers. So unfortunately, man, most pastors, especially if they're relying on this to like make a living or they don't want the church to, you know, go under, they kind of have to start, you know, pampering the church and speaking of these easy topics for women, because women are going to be the ones who spend, right? Yeah. Bring the kids, tithe, <laughs> pay them. The dad, you know, you know, not so much. Women, just search it up, guys. Women are like 90% of the consumers. In your house, it's your mom. Your mom buys the bed frame, the lights, the chandelier. Your dad don't care. Your dad said, give me a mattress and a burger. I'm good for life. 
<laughs> right? Look at Braden's room, bro. That's literally how men are. You just got an <laughs> empty room with a little mattress. That's that's how men are. Yeah. I mean, my, my place is kind of decked out because my girlfriend helped me, you know, four years ago. So it's a bit more kind of feminine. It's actually why I don't record in my house. I'll be honest with you. I record outside or like a garage or a gym or something like, you know, so yeah. It's the facts. Men, men are minimalist. We don't care. We need like if we're making content, we need the camera. We need a desk. We need yeah. a computer. That's it. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, I'm baby. Sure. And some coffee for me. Just give me a caffeine, some ground beef. I work labor, man. That's it. We do the same three things every day as men. We work out. We make money. We glorify God. That's mm -hmm. it. What else? You, what else do you need, man? You need your drugs. You need your this. You need your foreign. Trust me. Just like the Bible says, let it either be a yes or a no. Anything else is from the evil one, from Satan. Men are decisive. We're black and white. We're minimal. We're like guns. You're either loaded or you're not loaded. This in between wishy washy, in, you know, lukewarmness. It's effeminate. It's going to lead you to hell. Don't yeah. do it. Be a gun. That's the biggest thing, though. It's like I speak to so many guys, and I know you speak to so many men as well, where they've been so brainwashed into becoming more like women, mm -hmm. where they are indecisive. They don't mm -hmm. make decisions. They don't take action on their goals. They don't know what their purpose is. They don't know how to get a job. They don't know how to pay their taxes. They don't know how to change a tire on a vehicle, you know, because there's no fathers. There's no good, strong men. They've been over mothered and under fathered. Yeah. And it also points to the church. Like it's yep. so sad because so many guys, maybe they get born again. Maybe they've had a similar experience that you and I have had and they go to a church and they think that that's what they're supposed to do. And they go in and they have some just borderline soft, feminine, yeah. homosexual yeah. looking man who's, yeah. you know, tickling their ears and telling them that Jesus loves them, which is 100% yeah. true. But they don't tell them any of the facts. They just tickle yeah. their ears and tell them about Jesus loves you and live your best life. And God wants you to have friends or God wants you to have millions of dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they don't tell you the truth. They don't tell you to repent. They don't tell you how to become a more righteous and more God fearing man. They don't Pick tell you off, how to become, yeah. you know, based. They really yeah. don't. They don't tell you how to find your purpose, how to find a wife, anything. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's a shame. So for, for you, David, I know you're you're in the process of um ultimately finding a church. So for you, what would you say a young man who is looking for a church or looking for like a masculine mentor or a godly figure, yeah. like what should they be looking for? Would you say? Dude, yeah, it's so tricky because like I was just speaking to the guy, a, a guy yesterday, he came from the UK and I was literally this exact topic. I told him, I was like, look, man, you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. I'm like, it's kind of screwed both ways because look guys, and I'll tell you what I would it's hard. Okay. So number one, just to give a bit of context, I was part of a church. I think a lot of people forget that. They think like, oh, especially when Christ developed, David, you're just a lone ranger. You're anti-church. You're this dude. No, no. I gained my uprooting, uh, like how to street preach, how to be bold, how to proclaim the faith. Like I really learned from a, from a good pastor. He was like the most masculine dude I've ever met. The issue with that though, man, is like, man, it's, here, let me just close this. It's tricky guys, because long story short, I got to give you guys a bit of context. I was part of a really good church and I think about going back, but the problem is guys is you need to understand this Ephesians 6, 12 and very few people are going to understand this and no offense guys. Cause most people either just have low anointings, you know, you just, I don't know, God don't see too much potential in you or B what I really think it is, is you do have the anointing. You're just a coward. So God, again, is like, eh, he ain't going to do it, man. Next. Right. So for me, I was like, I signed me up. I was, the, I was the newest one at this church, man. I knew the least. I was the youngest one. This is about uh, six months ago. Right. And I was like, let's go, let's go. Yeah. I'll come out street preaching. I'll learn. I used to, I was their videographer just to learn. And man, these guys were getting like assaulted, spat on. Like, this is some real stuff, guys. I was like terrified. I was like, I've never seen this. Like I'll tell you guys, demons are real in people. You want to, you want to go street preach in some like certain communities, certain areas. Oh man. You ever, you ever guys had a can of Coke shooken up and thrown at you? That's a, that's a weird feeling, man. Have a bike rant. That's a weird thing, man. You're like, did this guy just throw this at me? What's happening? Right. And they're pouring stuff on you. You're like, what's going on? Like, oh, it's real guys. And then, so I saw how he handled it though. And he was just bold. He was, he didn't back down. He was like, nope, we're going to keep preaching. I saw this guy get arrested, man. I saw police every time come back and forth. And I'm like, bro, like I, I needed this though. I was a little traumatized, but I needed this. Right. And then later on, I was like, I'm ready. I want to start preaching. And I'm not going to go too into depth, but 
he ended up actually getting, you know, some stuff happened and then he could no longer preach just like legally. And I could though, you know, and I had this kind of like, it was almost like the baton was like handed to me and I had the zeal. I was like, I'm ready. I want to do this. I had the boldness. I was learning, right? Like a mentor. I was like, okay, let me try. And so I did, I, I first started, but it got to a point where something happened where I, I, I personally believe he started to get very envious and he really just basically wanted me to stop. Like mm -hmm. out of nowhere, like stop posting on YouTube. Don't record. You got to preach like this. It has to, you got to stand on this. You can't like, it's just all these rules. And it was kind of strange because he was never like that before. It was only after he got his ability to preach taken away. So I think it was a big hit to his ego. And he was like, mm -hmm. now this young guy is going to like, what, take my place. And he was like, no way. I'm not going to let that happen. So he started like really coming hard on me. And he was like, yeah, you basically can't post on YouTube. And I was like, well, what the heck? Like, I'm obviously going to, I have a, I have a calling. I want to do this. And then, so it got to a point where I, I, I left, but I kind of got like excommunicated. Like it just, it was a, you know, it was a sticky situation. So where I'm going guys is I've yet to find a church to be that based and masculine. Um, I'll be brutally honest. What I look for in a church, this is going to sound kind of bad. People look for different things. I don't really care about community. And I know that sounds kind of bad. Some of you guys may need that. I don't, I'm okay to, I would like a community, but that's not why I'm going. I need a man to convict me, to teach me. I need to learn. I really need to learn doctrines, like difficult, complex theological topics. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. And that's what I would recommend you guys look for. Because I'll tell you what, man, if you're just looking for a community, the majority of them are going to be middle-aged moms who just like milk you and suckle you and make you fat. God bless them. But those are most churches. They're middle-aged women who just kind of like sing. They give you cookies and they it's like a mom. And we don't need that. I need a community of men. And it's very, very, very rare to find other bold men, let alone evangelists, you know, who are also doing it. So I ref personally, I kind of refuse to go to a church that's just like soft and effeminate because I know, I know myself, it will start to affect me they're going to start looking at my channel and be like, eh, you're kind of a misogynist. You're, I don't know if Jesus would say that. And then I start, I'm kind of like, I'm not doubting myself, but I'm kind of like, dang, you know? So I refuse. No, 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 no. Um, so no, I have not found a church yet, but I would say for you as men, you need a strong pastor. You need a man who convicts you, who calls you out literally in front of the congregation. God, I can't tell you how many times I got called, bro. I was like, it was like nine in the morning. I'm like, did you just say my name? And he's like, David, man, you got to do better with this. I'm like, dang, yes, sir. It was like an army boot camp, guys. But I needed that though at the time. And uh, you need a community of men and they love you. They do love you. And, and then the final thing I would say just to wrap it up is your fellowship with men. You need men, okay? Go out preaching with them. Go, go, go to a dinner, but like really, you got to push each other, guys. So that's what I would say. Look for. Yeah. The Bible is, is heavy on um, like accountability and having the right people around you. Right. Proverbs 27 verse 17 says that iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. Right. There's so many verses like I, it's funny. You'll be reading the Bible and then you just like find random verses you've never read before. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, I got to jot this down. This is going in the next video for the boys. Yeah, amen. But it's, it's true. Like, I think it's you got to find the right church that is biblically based and stands firm on the word. Like there's so many churches out there where like they just, they compromise, yep. you know, like they, they just, they're weak on the word. They don't stand on biblical values. You'll have like women that are yep. preaching. You'll have, yep. you know, they accept gay marriage and all these things. Yeah. And this is not to condemn obviously, but it's just like the word of God is the word of God. Yeah. Right. And if you don't stand on that and, and you let certain things fall through the cracks, then you just have to be discerning. So I think the best piece of advice, if, if I was talking to a young man who wanted to find a church, is to sharpen your discernment and to be yeah. led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Exactly. Really compare what they teach and their doctrine to God's word. Braden got cut out. I don't know what happened to his Wi-Fi. I'll shoot him a tech. Oh, it's just me now. Oh. Oh, he returned, guys. He's alive. Back. He, to get he, was like, he will not expose me and my gay agenda. <laughs> I'm back. We can just cut that out. But yeah, yeah I was saying, um, just finding like a biblically based church that stands firm on the word of God. And I think that if you can't find the right church, like we're going to have guys, like I think we really are going to start a movement of Christian masculine men that stand firm on God's word and aren't are unapologetic and bold in their faith. Guys like David, guys like myself. There's one other guy that I can name. His name is Ryan Walker. He's like 19, but he yeah. he spits some bars as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But finding like a godly mentor is, is 
is a must because we become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And if you're hanging out with a bunch of lukewarm Christians, or you're hanging out with people that are fully like living in the world, it is going to affect you. Like David was saying, like if you hang out with the wrong flock, the wrong group of people, regardless of how firm you are and how strong and strongly convicted you are, it is going to affect you. So yeah. you have to surround yourself with the right group of men. And if you have goals, if you have aspirations, especially like spiritual aspirations and growing in your relationship with God, you must find guys that are already in the place that you want to be. Yeah. Right. A lot of guys are like, how do I get married? How do I find a wife and all this stuff? Or how do I grow deeper in my relationship with God? And they hang out with all the wrong people. Like, how do you expect to, to find, you know, a godly woman or to get married one day and start a family if you don't know anybody who's godly with a successful marriage and a family and kids? Right. There's very little likelihood that you're going to be able to do that on your own. You know, obviously, God can work miracles. but I would suggest that you find the right group of people to surround yourself with. So you get a step by step process to actually get there. So that's what I would say. Yeah. But yeah. Amen. David, could you add on to because um, your your street preaching ministry has uh, started to blow up. I know you you started out just kind of getting cussed out and yelled at on the on the side of the streets in Toronto, right? And and now you you've kind of transitioned into college campuses and doing some evangelism um, in college campuses, and then just going to like local concerts. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, but yeah, festivals. Want to yeah. speak into um, your ministry and then also things that you've learned, like while you know going out in the fire and being on the floor like the battlegrounds of christianity getting out there like most people don't actually do that yeah 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 for sure man so again guys god does not qual qual he does not call the qualified he qualifies the call that's it's so true guys like i told you you know a big reason i had to leave the church unfortunately which i didn't want to guys i like i, I was thinking about it for months it wasn't just like oh you made me feel bad i'm bought god no i stood there for months and i was just kind of like taking the uh little subtle hits and little subtle this and after a while i was like I was like, like, at what point, guys? Like, I once he was kind of like, yeah, you got to stop YouTube unless you tell me. And I'm like, bro, I, no, like, sorry, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> and then so uh, I, I started, guys. Like, bro, I literally went downtown Toronto. Was picture this: the middle of winter, dark nights. This is actually when I first kind of started talking to Braden. Dark days, middle of Toronto, crackheads everywhere, hobos, and I'm just this lone ranger dude going out. I find a random dude on Instagram to come film me. I don't know this guy. I don't know if he's going to just pack up and run. And I'm like, let's just start preaching. My buddy lends me a, a speaker because they're pretty expensive, right? A speaker. And then I was like, let's just rip it. And I, and I had to put in that work, guys. I had no church, no past. You're not like on paper. You're not supposed to do what I did. Like that's, it's, it's, you're supposed to go out with the church. You got guys with you. But I was just like, bro. I don't got that now. So I got to do what I got to do. And I did that for a couple months. And yeah, I didn't do too well on YouTube, but like it really trained me how to like hold frame, hold ground when people like come up to you and they're like, why do you have that? And you're just like, be gone, sir. <laughs> Jesus loves you. I rebuke you. <laughs> and you just don't take it too much, you know? Uh, and then I had the calling to hit up universities. Uh, literally, God was just like, make a sign. And I was like, okay, sure. So I made a sign on Canva and it was just like, Jesus saves if you're an A, B, C, D, you know, just a bunch of things that, you know, of course, guys, we, we all are or were. That's why we need Christ. And at the bottom, I said, you must be born again. So long story short, I hit up the university and bro, within like a week, the channel cracks. Like it just like, it was like a bingo. It just, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know what happened. I guess it was just the right thing. And I went and the, the people just started to like it. They liked the combo. So I was like, okay, let's just keep doing this. And now, um, as of the past month or so, I've been going into a lot of like festivals and stuff, which usually don't do as well. They still do well, but it's because school's like done. But school starts back up in literally like a week or two. So it's time to full send, make that channel go viral. And then hopefully, guys, come winter time, I'll come visit Braden. I'll I'll go to Florida, Cali, Texas, just a bunch of warm areas to hit their universities and then also meetups, collabs. But um, no, these next couple months, I just got to full send the goals full time, guys, by hopefully a few months. So Lord willing, go time. Amen. <laughs> yeah. And I know you did, um, I'm assuming like quite a few or quite a lot of extensive like research and studying on apologetics and like looking into how to defend the Christian faith. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is interested in apologetics or wants to learn more about like how to defend the Christian faith and like debating with Muslims and all the crazy stuff? Like what advice would you give them? Yeah, it's so funny, man. Like what I would say, guys, is like, first off, I'm not an expert. You know, I think I think maybe it comes across like, oh, wow, this guy knows a lot. Like 
I know what I know, but I know what I don't know. And and you have to know that. Like, don't my best advice to you guys is number one, start with what you have. You know, like I said, God, God, guys, God does not call the qualified, he qualifies the called. If you have an anointing or you have like a desire to start, I would recommend, like, obviously pray on it, guys. Don't just, you know, don't just rush in, you know, pray on it. But if you have the desire, start, man. And just start with what you do. Guys, when I started street preaching back with my church, I kid you not, I knew like two verses. I literally preached with like two verses. I was like, 1 John 1 18, if a man says he's without sin, he's a liar, the truth is not in him. And like Romans 10 9, if you confess with your, and that's all I knew. And then I just like, I, I, you know, you would use other things, like you'd give your testimony and you'd speak of just other things. But like, I really didn't know much. And it was fire. It was good. Like, like it was good. Like it was because it's not about, guys, it's not so much head knowledge. It's like, do you know the gospel? And so what I would say, um, especially with apologetics, it's a little bit deeper because you are speaking like one on one. Start with where you're at. You need to know the gospel, right? We're unrighteous. Our works are filthy rags. We're dead zombies in our trespasses. We have to become born again through Christ. We have to accept and we have to repent. We have to change from our old ways and realize that we're sinners on our way to hell. And through that, we put our faith in Christ to become born again. And we're a new creature. If you can really know that, like the back of your hand and know your testimony, that's the most important part. Because really what you're doing is just sharing the gospel, guys. You know, if people say, yeah, but like, what about King James? And like, was the Bible corrupted? You know, if, if you don't know something or you don't want to get too into that, just say, you know what? I'll be brutally honest with you. I, I don't know that. But what I can tell you is that the Holy Spirit is real and, and here's why. And then you begin to learn. You begin to kind of like, you hear the same arguments over and over. But I'll tell you guys this, the average person when you go to university or wherever, they're not that smart. And I don't mean that in like a mean way, but like they just hear a couple of things on TikTok and they kind of regurgitate that. And they're like, well, you know, it actually doesn't mean man with man. It means man with little boy. And then when you search up like what the Greek word means, you're like, no, the, the, the Greek word of sodomized arsenokotite, which means male bed. Don't, don't mean little boy. That means exactly what it means. And you begin to learn these kind of things. And then as time goes on, it just builds, you know, but I still have a lot to learn. If you guys want to learn about Islam, you can check out the channel because I'm not going to go too much into it on this. It's, it's, it, Islam, something I, I know quite a bit about. I probably know more on Islam than Christianity, to be honest. I don't know why I just found it interesting, but, uh, no, man, study the gospel, learn the Bible and share Jesus. Don't worry. About, please. The last thing I'll say is don't worry about, cause even I can get like this. If you want to do well, do not worry about scoring points. Don't be like, yeah, I got that atheist. Yeah. I, no, 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 no. It's not going to do well. God's going to humble you. You're there to preach Jesus. I'm there to share the gospel with you guys. Now at times, yes, it will look like a little debate, but it's because you're coming at me. I'm defending the faith. Mm -hmm. Just share the faith with what, you, with where you're at. That's what I would say. Yeah. While you've been street preaching and, and evangelizing on the campuses, um, have you ever experienced like pride or like that feeling of like being puffed up? Like I'm winning this argument, like I'm like <laughs> slam dunking this Muslim. <laughs> like, have you experienced that? Yeah, you know, uh, but I would, yes. But the thing is, guys, I really mean this and you, you will know this too. When you, when you get out into the battlefield, you're preaching, you're doing apologetics. It's not you, it's the Holy Spirit. So mm -hmm. you're going to find, and that's the next thing too. You, you're going to think like, believe me guys, there've been so many times before a big festival, like thousands of people. And then I'm going to be this one little street preacher. Like I get anxiety guys. I, the night before, or I go to a mosque. I literally went to a mosque, 400, hundreds of Muslims come in and I'm just like this, this dude. Right. Um, so, so don't try not to get into your head because once you have the spirit with you, you pray, Jesus, you know, fill me with your spirit. Allow me to be bold. Allow me to decrease so you can increase guide my words. Uh, you know, bring the right people. When you have that humble attitude, man, the Holy spirit really protects you guys. When people get in your face, which is more rare than you think, or they do this, or you, you, you emanate love. And you're bold and you have truth and it's not me. So I can't even take credit. So um, when I'm starting to like win an argument, I, I wouldn't like maybe my flesh wants to kind of get the higher thing. But like because I'm in my spirit, it's like, dude, I, I you know, I love you, man. You're just like you're, you're just confused like I was like, yeah. like I'm the exact same as you. They're just a dude trying to figure it out. So so and remember this to the last thing I'll say is like. And this is why I'm trying to distance myself a little bit from like the apologetic space. I want to be more of like an evangelist because if you get into the mindset of like winning and let's say you do win, like the intellectual, the theological debate, that's only half the equation. If you don't share them Christ and really emulate that through your actions, so what? You, you think they're just going to accept Christ because you debunked their atheism? No, they probably hate you now. And they're like, I hate Christians. I hate this preacher. So prideful. No, no, no. But if you say, hey, look, 
and you're very calm about it and you're very loving and you're, you're, you're truthful. You're, you're, you're honest, but you're like, you can't have this. Oh man, that sticks with them forever. They'd be like, this guy could have like destroyed me and embarrassed me or whatever, but he didn't. And he was just like, I, I was just like you, man. And you give them like a card or something, dude, that will, that will sit with them. And the, the Holy spirit will start, you planted seeds. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Have you had anybody reach out to you like that you met out on a college campus or Tons. that you evangelized to? Every, every day, bro. I, I was at a gym yesterday out in Whippy, divine appointments. I was talking to a guy for like 40 minutes and he was like, dude, thank you so much. God sent me like, and it's the same, it's the same thing, man. They're just, they need that encouragement. Just like with our channels, that's all it is. God's calling them and they need those men who are a little bit farther to say, yes, you can do it. Here's how. Boom, 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 boom masculine leaders because their pastor sure as heck ain't doing it for him <laughs> so they need guys like you and i to be like no you we have to breathe life into them that's what it means to be inspired to literally like think of like offspring with men women literally like bet you know birth out children we as men we breathe life into men we breathe like you said you pour into men we breathe the spirit into men and it builds them up and it's like it's like an army general like like men today we dine in hell. Like, don't actually, <laughs> you know, that's from 300. Uh, we don't say that, but you got what I'm saying, right? So, yes, men need that. Yep. Yeah. W would you say that, because I know as Christians, we're all called to preach the gospel, you yeah. know, and, and I feel like it's the easiest that it's ever been to spread the gospel, like with social media, like you can literally just grab a phone or grab a camera and press record and talk about Jesus and spread the gospel that way. Like you yeah. don't actually, like you should, you should evangelize people in person, but you can just take out your camera and just make videos online and thousands of people around the world will hear the gospel. So for you, <clears throat> what would you say to a Christian who maybe they feel like they don't know enough or like they're not ready enough or they struggle with that overthinking or that perfectionism or that procrastination how would you get them over that so that they can get out of their comfort zone and, and start spreading the gospel like more seriously? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would say you're being selfish. I would say you're thinking mm -hmm. too much about yourself. You're thinking too much about like what man thinks about you. Like, oh, do I, do, am I going to know everything in this? You, 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 it's not about you, man. It's about these people. And these people don't really know anything. You guys, it's the devil. Really what it is is the devil's trying to scare you. He's trying to spook you. He's trying to say, if you go, you're going to get debunked and then you're going to be on the news and you're going to get arrested and your family's going to die. Like he's going to tell you all this stuff and you're like, oh, I don't want that to happen. And it's a lie, guys. It's a lie. You're going to go there to the university or on the street corner and the majority of people are just not going to care. They're just going to walk right on by. But you're going to get some people come up and be like, you know, they might kind of mock a little bit or they might be like, hmm, like, tell me about this, you know? And what the Bible says in Isaiah is that God's word never returns void. I believe it's 55, 11. It never returns void. It always accomplishes what it was set up to do. So remember that like anytime you dude, I've been street preaching so many times and like no one's come up to me or like, it seems like, Oh, like what a waste. It's never a waste guys. There's always that guy who is listening in the back and you didn't see, or he was just there for a couple minutes. And it's like, you really planted a seed. Now he's going to go home and be like, ah, you know what? Christianity verse whatever, or, or is Jesus true? And then a rabbit hole is going to start. So yeah, you got to stop thinking about yourself. And what I would say is you'll know when you're ready. Like God will not send you to places. If you know, if he knows you're not ready. My first six months at the church, I was not called to preach. I was just behind the camera absorbing, but I knew when it was time, it was like a light switch. God was it, the best way I can explain it is just like, he's like, you're ready. And I had this zeal. You're zealous. You have this like desire to start going and if you have that i believe you're right meditate like pray on it make sure it's not you know you know like because it, it won't go away and then do it man you're ready start with where you're at don't just think it's about you it's not about you man we don't have time and you learn as you go yeah and i think it's important like you were saying earlier like a lot of people have this false perception that guys like you and me don't have any nerves before we make a video or like whenever you first getting started or before you go and street preach or, you know, go scream at people about Jesus that we're just like invincible and we don't get nervous. We don't make mistakes, but that's so far from the truth, you know? Yeah. And I think it's, it's important. Like even the Bible talks about how whenever you are evangelizing and you are speaking into somebody about Jesus or growing in their relationship with God, that we don't need to overthink it because the Holy spirit will give us the things that we need to say in the moment. Right. Yeah. Even like, 10 minutes before you're gonna have no idea what you're gonna say no clue 
<laughs> yeah, even like five yeah. seconds, bro. I have no clue. I just I just let it rip. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of your videos, like even your content is is kind of just spirit less. Freestyle. Like we're just it's all press. freestyle. Yeah. You just press record <laughs> and you're like, God, what do you want me to say? Like, here's the video topic and I'll just rip it. You it's know, so, so true. You know what's funny too? I've literally been um if you're guys, if you're really like discerning and quiet, you can literally actually like hear God. And I don't mean audibly. Like I, I, I don't hear him audibly. Like David, my boy, tell them three masculine traits for them honeys. You know, I don't hear that, but like, bro, I'll like, guys, I can't make this out. I'll like right before I press record, I'll just be there with the camera and I'll walk into place and I'll just hear like this one thing every Christian man needs. And like, I filmed a couple of videos today and that was, it was boldness. It was righteous anger. And, and I, I don't plan this beforehand. I don't, maybe I'll make some notes in my phone, but like, I, I really don't look at them. And then another video will be like, like, I don't know, lust or whatever you just, it, it just, it just hits you. It's like, listen to your, your, your gut, bro, your spirit. And you can feel this like video topic or this idea. And then what's great practice to is street preaching. Cause it's a freestyle. It's all Holy spirit led. Like you have no clue what you're going to say. You, you go here and then you go here and you go here. And I'm not saying guys, you know, you don't plan like, yeah, you can plan, but like, I would just have more faith in yourself. The Latin word actually for confidence is confidential which means to trust and that's to trust god really it's trust yourself it's to trust god that's what true confidence is it's not oh yeah i got the biggest this the strongest this a lot of those men are actually very insecure because they're they're premeditating like should i approach her like this should i say this uh confidence is the guy who's very laid back he's actually very hey whatever happens happens i'm just gonna kind of roll off the cuff and and they're like comedians almost comedians are like the most confident dudes because like they just like swing and they can flip it back at you and they're very like nonchalant and because they maybe that's a bad example because we're not, you know, comedians probably aren't Christian, but like, you know what I mean? Do that. Yeah. No, it's true. I think it, like we were talking about earlier, like a lot of the, the modern men have become more feminized where, mm -hmm. you know, a natural trait of being feminine or being a woman is like being indecisive and not really being able to just take action on certain things and needing yeah. guidance and needing people to tell you what to do. Yeah. You know? So it's like, I think a lot of men have fallen victim to that where they, procrastinating on everything and they're looking for somebody to tell them what to do and the perfect way to do xyz even yeah. though there is no perfect way there's yeah. no perfect like gospel presentation there's no perfect youtube yeah. video there's no perfect street preaching session yeah <laughs> people yeah. are gonna walk oh. up to you and say things that you're not ready for yeah 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 it's just yeah. gonna happen yeah you know so it's just it's funny like i think a lot of guys need to realize that that people like you and me are not you know superhumans we've made a ton of mistakes and and especially like getting out there and putting your your balls on the line and <laughs> you know yeah. sacrificing your reputation you know street preaching telling people the gospel you know facing rejection and like a high likelihood of rejection as well from, yeah. from random strangers like yeah it's something that you have to do you know like like jesus everyone in the bible the apostles they they all had to put their their nuts on the line and, and get uncomfortable because they had that calling from god Amen. And that's, you know, that's what we, I'm trying to fix the legacy. That's what we need more than ever right now. We need men who are, that's literally what my last video is. We need men who are willing to get uncomfortable and, and willing to not know the result. That's what courage is guys. You know, my, one of my favorite quotes, I, I'm not sure if it's a, I don't think it's a biblical quote, but it's um, fear is a reaction. Courage is a choice. Man, is that true? Cause before I press record, before I start preaching, Oh, I have the reaction of like my, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people, man. They're kind of looking at me like the, there's like the, the big guy there. And I'm kind of like, fear's a reaction. Like you don't even think it's just, it's on automatic courage is a choice. When I mm -hmm. first start good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Toronto. How you guys doing? My name is David M. I'm here to boldly proclaim the, I have to choose. I have to press record. I have to start. And then once you start the Holy spirit then takes over, but that's the hardest part guys. It's just beginning. You know, and we need more men. Like, like I said, like, that's what confidence is. Like, you need to be okay failing and like falling on your face and looking like an idiot and then just getting back up and be, just brushing it off. Like you look, you look like a dork in that video or you look like a, an idiot preaching that, but like you have that ability to just like own that and really like, and that's why I'm, I'm very like hard to people. And like, I, they have that like kind of rough edge because it's like, and I leave it very raw in my videos, like where I'll almost like make little mistakes or fumble and I'll kind of keep it in there for the most part mm -hmm. because it's like I show that grittiness like, OK, well, you fumbled, pick it back up. Come on, let's go. And you keep going. Right. Because that's a skill you guys have to have. You're going to like be dribbling a basketball and it's going to slip. Go get it. What are you going to do? Just cry and that's it. Game over. Go get it. Go get it. And you learn. You learn how to kind of like when you fall off the surfboard to get back on quick. That's a, yeah. that's a very important skill. Yeah. No, and I think it's 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 important to have that authenticity. 
like in everything that you do, because yeah. you're yeah. you're just David. You know, you're not pretending to be a certain guy behind the camera and then you're a completely different guy off camera. Like you're you're yourself. You're a man of God. You love making videos. You love preaching the word and helping men to become better men. And I think like having that the times in the videos where you like misspeak or you screw up things or you say something stupid, or <laughs> maybe you like cuss on accident or exactly, something. Like, exactly. Yeah. Like that, For real. Yeah. Knowing that, that we're not perfect because yeah, no, no way. You know, the only reason why Jesus came down to, to this earth to die on the cross was was because we weren't perfect and we could not earn our way into heaven on our own. You know, all the Jews, all the, the people in the Old Testament, they tried, they failed yeah, hundreds yeah. of thousands of times. And that's why Jesus had to come down was to save us and give us that opportunity to eternal life because we aren't perfect. And, and we all make mistakes. Not, neither of us are perfect. We <laughs> screw up on our Christian walk even yeah, all, all the time. time. You yeah, know. every day, guys. That's that's the reality. It's we're saved by grace through faith, guys. You know, Braden and I would kind of, you know, probably bring it to a close ish kind of soon. You know, I think a yeah. lot of guys, when you follow our channels, you might kind of uh, accuse us of being like works based salvationists and guys like this. We're, we're actually not. We're, I think Braden and I are actually chronically aware of how like inadequate we are and how much we need Christ and how how there's really nothing we can do. But the, the beautiful thing about following Christ is that it's only once you realize that you're a nobody that you can begin to build yourself up as a somebody with Christ. And I believe that's the real gospel. That's the beauty of it. We're nothing. We're dead in our trespasses. We're saved. It's unmerited favor. And we become born again. We're a new creature. And because of that, we it's almost like we have superpowers now. We're like, let me use the power and the life Christ has given me to its fullest potential. And that's where being a disciple comes in the picture. Do you guys all need to be? No. If you, you can choose to you know, become born again and then do nothing. I, I just, I don't really see how that's even possible because you're a new creature. You desire to live for Christ now. And that's going to look different for everybody. I'm not saying you guys got to street preach. I'm not saying you got to start a YouTube channel, but you will have that inclination to, to, to pick up your cross, to live more righteously, to, to overcome this. And it's not even that, like, I don't even like the word like, I guess it is discipline, but it's, it's really just the spirit within you convicting you. Like you just don't desire it anymore. Like I don't desire to, you know, smoke the vapor to do this. It's removing organically. And that's why self-improvement without Christ. That's when one of my future videos is meaningless. Self-improvement without Christ is just mental masturbation. It's just like, it's like David Goggins, you're shooting, you're like you, you try to eat a cookie and you slap your hand and then you try to eat a cookie, you slap your hand. It's a, it's a cycle of just like self-torture really is what it is. And it, maybe it'll work. You know, you'll beat the rat into submission, but it's like, you're still going to hell. So what's the point? You know, like where with Christ, not only do you go to heaven, he actually trains you. It's not us training ourselves it's christ actually carrying us and yes we still will use our we have free will so we will have to you know make the decision to be obedient but but once you decide christ is the one who really like carries us all we have to do is just you know say yeah i'll do it like i accept and then he'll be like all right i got you buddy let's go yeah it's true it's the submission submission to God. exactly yeah, yeah. And it's funny, like we have all these boss babe women now that don't want to submit to any man or anything. And like men act like, oh, I'm this big masculine guy. I'm not going to submit to anybody. But it's that's not at all how it's supposed to be. Like we are called to submit to God because he's yeah. the one giving us air in our lungs and waking us up every single day. You know, so we submit to Christ. We become masculine and godly men. We are sanctified through the sanctification process. We could become born again. Our lives completely change. We become a new creation. And then, you know. If God wants you to have a woman one day and start a family and you're called to that, he's going to bring you your Eve. So, yeah. um, David, did you have anything else that you wanted to cover or anything else that you want to speak into for the boys watching? Yeah, it? yeah, because we can we can even if you want to hit, hit those. I don't know if you want to do some a quick Q&A or kind of I got another go another like 10 minutes or so and then I got to head out. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't know if you wanted some questions. Maybe you wanted to answer a question. Or yeah, no? let me uh, the boys asked a few questions for you. Let me uh, pull up. I have a whole thread in the discord titled questions for david hammond <laughs> nice <laughs> all right so first question is from a guy named Weevan. that's his at least we what's up buddy how you doing i got you buddy you in good hands now we he says what method would you find the most effective to quit corn that's a great question man and it's it's funny because if you saw my videos i might not be the right guy to ask anymore i relapsed a couple weeks ago but my my uh my my testimony is there i explained why you know satan really it's close to reaching back out to max. It was a, it was kind of a dark time, but no, I've been on no fat for about five, six years. I did relapse a couple of weeks ago, but we've been good since I'll probably another five years or hopefully never do it again. But 
I would say um, you got to become born again, man. That's number one, because the reason I relapsed wasn't because of lust. It's because it was because of hopelessness. I, I I almost felt like suicidal for a couple weeks. I don't know what happened, guys. It was right before I started my channel, but you really need to be careful with that. So what I would say is, number one, once you're truly born again, the feeling of lust will begin to slowly dissipate. And then with that, you need to understand, man, that like Satan will never stop attacking you. And the higher up you go, there will be higher ranks of demons. Like, don't get cocky. Like, I, I thought, ah, I overcame this for good. But then as about I'm about to reach like a new height, a new anointing, a new, you know, pursuit. Satan is going to be like a higher rank demon. Go get this guy. And you really need to rely on the word. So I, I, I don't want to say I'm happy that it happened, but it really... It shows you how valuable you are as a man and how like you really we need to rely on the word of God and uh, you got to live by it and um, and you're going to fall short, man. So I, what I would say to you is get back up. Don't beat yourself up. Um, but 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 yeah, become born again, man, and really just submit your life like just stop BSing it, dude. Stop. You know, like once I did it, man, I didn't have a pity party. I didn't you know, I knew it was wrong. I dusted my feet and I just didn't do it again. I just it's kind of like you're running a marathon. You trip. You just get up. Like, don't mm -hmm. sob, don't, but I was this close. Shut up. I screwed up. Don't even yeah. think about it. Yeah. Polar opposite. You could have done an emotional soy boy episode and deleted your whole channel and like, oh, yeah. <laughs> isolated yeah. yourself from the world. Screw the ministry. I'm not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I could have, man. But like what you guys got to understand is like, yeah, the higher up you go, like, it's just, it's going to happen, guys. You're going to fall short. Um and it really humbles you. You know, I, I hope I can be celibate till marriage. And I, and that's that's the plan. I have been so thus far. But stay humble, man. And um, be sober and vigilant because Satan is real. And he will he will get you when you least expect it right before a breakthrough. So, yeah. That's, yeah. That's it. And the motivator is like what you just said. Like the, t the times that you feel the most tempted or the most overwhelmed, it's almost like imagining that like the top ranking demon is like in your in your room, you know, and he's coming <laughs> bringing everything he's got. Yeah. You overcome that temptation. You're sending that dude straight back to hell. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You're Amen. The breakthroughs right around the corner. It, so it, it really is. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So I yeah. would say, yeah, be humble, man, but full send it because even giants fall, guys, but you fall to do better. Amen. Question number two is from a guy named Lynx. Allegedly, that's his name. <laughs> but it says, what would you say to the current upcoming generation who has a misconception that hell will be a big party and they don't seem to realize the significance of their need for God and Jesus more specifically? Yeah, that's a great. You got you got a good audience, man. It's a good question. <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, again, it's just, it's media. You have to understand that Satan rules this world, right? So he's going to have his, he has his hand on everything, media, politics, yada, yada, yada. So everything he's pushing is really against Jesus. And um, there's no more fear of the Lord. You know, guys like Braden and I and pastors are actually like, we are literally like the salt of the earth and like all born again believers are, but uh, Hey man, preachers like us, we get judged the hardest. Like when you read the Bible, Oh man, we're going to get judged way harder because like we are like the army. Like we're like the general fighting everything satanic. And so we're actually going to get attacked the hardest. Like you guys think you get attacked with your little whatever. No, no, no. Satan always goes for the, the leaders up front because if he can take those out and a lot of pastors are gone, he's, he's won. And if the pastor, it's okay to fall guys, but if you stay down, Satan's won. And then it's good. And then no one cares. There's no fear of the Lord anymore. So yeah, we get back up and, and we really preach holiness and righteousness and picking up your cross. And well, first and foremost, becoming born again, realizing you need a savior. But then after that discipleship, it's just like the gym, right? Like, the first step is just to get the, the fat person in the gym. Okay, good. All right. You're, let's say you're saved. Now you're in the gym. Amazing. Great. But now we got to start losing weight. Now we want to start shaping up a little bit, right? And then maybe you've lost the weight. Okay, guess what? It gets better. Now we can start building muscle. Now you can start doing powerlifting or like it keeps going, guys. And I really think there's a lack of, of, of discipleship right now. And that's kind of where we come to the picture to say, hey, guys, you're not you're, like, it's not I'm born again. That's it. No, no, no. It, like you, you've actually just begun. It keeps going. Yeah. And a lot of people have bought into that idea. Like a lot of people that just don't really think deeply about anything. Like they really do think that hell is going to be some party. I see TikTok videos all the time. I don't know. You're probably in the same algorithm as me. Yeah. Where they're talking about, man, I can't wait to go to hell. I, I hate God and blah, blah, blah. And like, I can't wait to die so I can burn in hell forever. And it's like, 
food. <laughs> like they just don't know what they're talking about. Like, yeah, they but, but, but they yeah. say that because they don't actually know. No rational human being in their right mind who truly knew what it was like would ever joke about that. Like, no. and what I say to them too, is I actually flip it on them. This is something you'll get from the Holy spirit. When you, when you evangelize flip, flip stuff on people, use their own logic. The back gets a party in hell. And I'm like, go put your hand on the stove for five seconds right now. You're, you're caught. You're confident, right? Go do that. Let's see it. You coward. You won't do it. Why? Cause you know, it's real. And they're, then they get silent. They're like, Oh man, I, it was not that serious. I'm like, no, it is that serious. Don't act all cocky, right? Yeah. It is. And, and it's funny when, when people are like, man, you're a health fire preacher. Like you, you're too serious and too conservative with the Bible, man. Like, like just be a little more, more talking about how Jesus loves me and, and don't convict me of my sin. Like, what would you and, say to that person? Yeah. Well, who's saying that? It's a woman saying that. If it's a man <laughs> saying that, what a gay man, dude, what an effeminate man. How dare you call yourself a Christian man? You think you're going to get married and lead your wife it's talking like that? You can't, man. I'm sorry. Um, it's women. That's why I don't want to join most churches because that's exactly what you're going to get. You know, I, I know this firsthand. I preached and I had a couple of guys from a church join me and the woman, the man was okay. The woman was like traumatized. She looked at me after. She was like, why so harsh in this? And like, and this is why. No. Like yeah. I, I don't, I don't preach with women. Stay back in the church. It's going to freak you out. The man was like, yep, that, you know, that's how it is. Sorry. You got to be harsh sometimes. It's like dads, right? When they like pull out the belt, like that's how it is sometimes. And the mom's like, no, my baby, don't do it. But it has to, you got to discipline yeah. the kid because you love him. Right? That's Hebrews 6, 8. The, the Lord chastens those he loves. So look forward to that guys. Yes. I'm a hellfire preacher because Jesus was a hellfire preacher. Amen. Yeah. And you're <laughs> speaking the truth in love which is exactly what the Bible tells us to do. Like you would rather have the friend that looks at you and says, hey, you got something in your teeth. And yeah. the guy is like, man, you look great. Have fun in hell. <laughs> you know? Yeah. What? Like, are you kidding, guys? Like, you, you think that's love? I say the, the LGB and just whoever, right? When they, when they promote sin, anyone outside of Christ, I say they don't love you. They don't love you at all. A real person who loves you says, hey, your house is on fire, man. My house was on fire and here's what I did. I don't want you to go to hell. And you can, you can, a good quote I like to say is I would rather offend you to the truth than comfort you to a lie. And that's even with my channel. I have like eight videos, bro. Bro, I preach hard, man. I You look at my comments. I like, I my eyes bulge. I go, because I love you guys. And, you know, very few other pastors and people are doing this. And it's like, I really do care about you guys. Um, And, and really just kind of wrap it up here. It's like men's love is different than women's love. And, and a lot of guys haven't had this in their life. So they're very used to mommy love and mommy love is different. It's, 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 I don't want you to take risks. I want you to be safe. I want you to be coddled because that's, that's what women do. And that's not a bad thing, but that's just how moms are where men's love is very, it's challenging. It, it, it's, I want the best for you. It's iron sharpens iron. It's push, man. I, I know you can do more and it's harsh sometimes. And I say that to myself with men above me. It, it's not easy. It wasn't easy getting called out in the, in the pulpit, man. It wasn't easy um, you know, you know, leaving the church, a lot of things. It's unfortunate, but like God and, and really God's going to be the one pushing you. He's like, you're ready, man. You got to, you got to start. And one last thing I want to say to this too, because this really helps your life is not your life anymore. Oh, change exposure. Be <laughs> change exposure. I rebuke you. <laughs> um, your life is not even your life anymore, guys. Like you're bought and paid for. Like whenever I'm starting to get kind of like effeminate or just like in my feelings or whatever it is, I, the way I view it is like, it's not my life, bro. If, if you think of Jesus in the garden, what a, you, what a perfect example. Oh man. The epitome. Hey, hey, God, the father, I'm scared. If this cup can pass me, I don't want to do this, but not my will, your will. Oh man. Hits the nail on the head. God, I'm feeling kind of queasy. I don't really know if I want to do this. I don't really want to give up the channel, but again, not my will, your will. What do you want? Cause God knows best. The father always knows best, even when it's scary. Uh, so just trying your best to realize it's not your life. You, you, you don't have, like you do have free will, but like the way I, I'll be brutally honest. I don't even think, I don't even think I have free will at this point. Like I'm so all in with Christ and God, when he tells me to do something, I know my free will of not doing it is such like an inferior choice that I don't even, I really don't even consider when he's like jump. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. it's just the spirit of God working in you. And yeah. The longer you are a born again, Christian, the exactly. more the Holy spirit works on you and changes your desires. 
And like you're saying, you can make the joke that you don't have your free will, but it's like your desires become more like God's desires. You become more like Christ every single day. Yeah. So the things that he wants you to do are the things that you end up wanting it, to do as exactly. well. Exactly. You want right. to do them. And again, guys, you know, I'm going to fall short daily. So I, I'm, I'm joking a bit when I say like, I don't, obviously we have free will, but, but no, like what Braden said, yes, our desires literally become more aligned with God. So when he says, Hey, try this, even if it's a little scary, you're like, amen, because you actually do end up enjoying it even when it's difficult like you know it's a different topic when even when jesus was getting persecuted and crucified in the worst ways like he there was still a level of peace because he knew he had to fulfill this like this is how he saves humanity even amongst the most gruesome pain which i hope god forbid i hope we never get there but like it, it's such a beautiful story that is the hero's call to adventure to be a sacrifice for humanity but to know that you did it like you're the right. hero you know <laughs> yeah yeah all for god's glory too yeah. you know david this has been incredible i know you have a dinner to get to but uh no dude this was awesome i'm, I'm so glad you hopped on and uh was able to speak into this generation of men that desperately need masculine and godly figures in their life um fellas if you made it this far in, in the video you are incredible you have the attention span like god tier impressive <laughs> attention span what i want you to do is go ahead i'm going to leave both of david's youtube channels in the description so he's got his christ developed preaching ministry where he's going out and evangelizing it's fire you have like fifty thousand subscribers now don't you a little over 54 yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he has his new channel that um is already popping off he's already doing very well and I'm happy for him. I'm excited to see what God is going to do through him. So, fellas, don't just subscribe to me. Make sure to subscribe to David as well. He's a man of God, as you can tell from this video. And, uh, yeah, David, thank you for hopping on. It was a pleasure. Yes, sir. God bless, guys. Love you all. Appreciate you guys. Uh, if any of my guys are watching this too, hit up Braden. Uh, our channels are very similar. He's pretty much the only other guy I would say – we're kind of like pioneers with this biblical masculine industry, to be honest. There, guys, and I'm not saying this to brag. There really aren't other that I found too many channels. I know that will change though, and I'm very excited to see other men join this wave. So, full steam ahead, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time. Whenever we do, Amen. Peace, boys. See ya.